Hey guys, welcome to Intentional Homeschooling. I'm Chantelle and today I'm joined by Ephraim and Reka. We're going to be talking about some of the books that we've read recently. The kids are going to be talking about some books that they read off of a list that I made for them. We're going to start with Ephraim. First of all, he got kicked in the face yesterday, so his lip is like still <laughs> really swollen. <laughs> so just excuse that. It wasn't... I didn't kick him. I didn't either. It's just a little kid too. <laughs> mm -hmm. Some, somehow a little kid kicked kicked him and it was like 13 hours ago and it's still swollen. <laughs> anyway, we're gonna talk about two of the books that he read. He started one. You started Wishmakers, which is one of your favorite books, mm -hmm. and you didn't enjoy it. Oh, uh, I did enjoy the first part. It was just kind of confusing. Okay, so might try that one again. Which one do we want to talk about first? Um, this one. Are they both by the same author? They are. Yeah. Okay. So, Escape from Mr. Lemoncello's Library. This one is um, a library with like games and puzzles to try to figure out how to escape it, right? I've never read it. There's like a word code. Word code. And then there's like different things uh, in the book, and then you have to try to put those together. Okay. And so this is book one in a series. Mm hmm And how many stars out of five would you give it? Four. So I made a list of books for each of them at the beginning of the year that I wanted them to physically read. There's not much for pictures or puzzles or anything. Um, okay, what did you like? So I like how they, this kid, he wanted to go so much to the, to the library, mm -hmm. but he didn't read the escape part. Oh. <laughs> And then, so he was stuck in his Lemon Channel's library, and he was just like, always wanting to go, he, for part of it, he wanted to go in to the library, mm -hmm. and then he wanted to go out, and he wanted to stay in, because he met Mr. Lemon Cello. Okay. Kyle, that's the main character. Mm -hmm. Is it a funny book? Kind of. Kind of funny. Okay. Anything else you want to say about it? Uh, well, no, not really. No? Okay. And then by the same author, you read... Uh, the Smartest Kid in the Universe. Yeah. And this one is about a kid that ate some jelly beans that somehow made him the smartest kid. They were experimenting. Oh. Who was? Well, some scientists, and then there was a hotel... And then they put the jelly beans in the hotel, not thinking... Like in a jar? Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's not smart. Mm -hmm. And then they weren't really thinking, and then he just grabbed them because he was hungry. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it, one part I like about it, he has a girlfriend. Does he have a girlfriend? I didn't know that. That's yeah. gross. That's so gross. <laughs> Was this one laugh out loud funny? Yes. Yeah? Okay. So those are your two books. Anything else you want to say? No. No? What are you currently reading? Oh, you just finished this book. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're reading? Unlocked. Unlocked, book 8.5 in the Keeper of the Lost City series. That's right. Okay. So if you want to go off and do things on your own now. Okay. You're good to go? Thanks for joining us. I was just curious. <laughs> okay. Change of plans. Rika's... <laughs> We got a kitten, and it's mostly hers, but she's definitely allergic to it. So now she's got to go wash her hands and clean out her eyes a little bit. They're flaring up. So I'll quickly talk about some of the books that we've read for read-alouds. Um, I'll start with the audiobooks that we've done. So the first one we did is A Place to Hang the Moon. This one definitely has um, like Narnia vibes if the siblings from Narnia never found the wardrobe and they were just siblings that were sent off into the country. And the author fully admits in the author's note that she loved that story growing up, and one of the characters is even named Edmund and is based off of Edmund. I read this book physically in the summer and loved it five stars. The audiobook, unfortunately, the narrator does not cut it for me. That, I would have rated the book a whole, like, one star less because of that. And I noticed, I don't know if I noticed it when I was physically reading it, but I noticed it when I was listening to it that there's a few things that are like, oh, those aren't like UK terms. I don't know if the author is actually 
I'm assuming she's like American and there was a few things in there that were like those are not those are like American words not UK words but overall love this book so many good quotes I used one of these quotes for my little homeschool magazine that I put out a mini holiday magazine um, it's up in my shop or if you join the membership you get that included um, it's like what's the quote say I always find a hot cup of hot cocoa makes an unpleasant task even more bearable something like that and there was a lot of like hot quote hot cocoa and like bookish quotes in here that I really 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 enjoyed so there was one that was like you know something to do with the fact that you should never tell a lie but if it involves going to the library like if you tell a lie so you can go to the library then it's okay uh, yeah highly recommend this book um, I will talk about our other audiobooks. I'm going to see if Rika's ready because I'd like to do her books first and then we'll go into the rest of the audiobooks. Okay, so Rika's got a stack of books here. Um, we'll start with the first one. I can be your book holder. Okay. First one is Heartbeat. This is a free verse novel about a 12 year old girl who likes running and the cat's trying to get in. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Did you just pause on me? Definitely a pause. Paw under the door. You want to let him in? <laughs> he can join us, I guess. Unless he tries to attack the tree. So much for washing your hands and wiping your eyes. Oh, okay, so she likes running. She has this drawing thing. Oh, she has to watch an apple decompose, right? Mm hmm. Don't go after the tripod. Not the camera. Look. Um, it's free burst. She, Her mom is pregnant. She's going to have a sibling. And her grandpa is got like dementia or Alzheimer's or something. Um, so there's lots going on. What did you think of it? You're not as big of a fan of free verse novels in general no. as I am. I think the only free verse novel I actually really liked was Forget Me Not. You also like Closer to Nowhere. Oh yeah, but I don't, I don't think of that as a free verse because I um, listened to it. Oh yeah. Um, so this one was just like all right for you? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Next up, Prairie Lotus. So this is set in like, I don't know, like the pioneer days in the States, uh, except our main character is half Chinese. So this is like Little House on the Prairie. Is he eating my cords? Should I go get him? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the most interrupted video ever. Watch your feet. You're going to knock the tripod over. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, he can't chew on those. So our main character, what was her name? Hannah. Yeah, so she's half Chinese. Her Chinese mother died a few years before this book. She moves to a new town with her dad, who is white, and she faces a lot of discrimination because she's half Chinese. Mm -hmm. Overall thoughts? Um, like on the book or the characters? I don't care. Whatever you've got thoughts on. Well, for the characters, it's like I quite liked Hannah, but I didn't really like her dad. Her dad was terrible. I mean, I know he was trying to protect her because he didn't want her. He was pretty much trying to hide her because she was Chinese and he was doing it because he wanted to protect her, but he never really stood up for her when the townsfolk were trying to put her down or something. Anything other thoughts? No, but well, it was very inspiring and I like the author's note. Right, so she wants to write some historical fiction and the author wrote it because she is Asian. Is she half Asian? Or I don't know why that part... Well, it doesn't really matter. Um, but she enjoyed Little House on the Prairie growing up, and so she wanted to write a book with a character that kind of looked like her, mm -hmm. set in that time period. Yep. Okay, and then you read some Canadian girl books and this American girl book. Mm -hmm. Overall thoughts on those books well, in I general? Well, I didn't finish that one. You it was it? not very good. Okay. This one wasn't very good. I think you're a little old for these now. Yeah. And then Mostly it's like, I think I would have liked them a few years ago, but mostly bothered me because it's like the same age, the character is the same age as me, but acts like a lot younger. Mm. So it's like, there's no relating to... Don't chew on a tripod. You're going to knock the whole thing down. Does he need to be kicked out? Okay, but like overall, <laughs> and the Canadian girl ones too, you weren't a huge fan of, were you? No, but those ones were better. Okay, then we've got The Length of a String. This one is dual timeline. Um, our main character in our present... Well, it's actually, I don't think it... Is it dual timeline? She's trying to solve a mystery from years past. So this girl is adopted. Um, 
she's adopted into a Jewish family and she's trying to solve the mystery of her great grandma or grandma her great grandma um she came over from wait no her grandma a small country i can't remember which one lithuania during world war ii um lithuania only had like a thousand jews in the whole country um she came over to america and this imani uh, our main character finds her journal and tries to figure out what exactly happened with her. There was a, a very interesting history. Uh, yeah. Any other thoughts? Well, I did just realize that, yes, it is her great-grandma. Yes. Okay. Um, it, that one was really good. I especially liked um, her little brother. <laughs> uh, the one character in here neither of us liked is the... Okay. Yeah, definitely the most interrupted video ever. Uh, the mother, the main character is asking questions about her birth family and the mother doesn't want to tell her anything, doesn't want her inquiring. And as an adoptive mother, I can't relate to that because I'm like 100% okay with questions and trying to figure things out. It's like if you're going to adopt, like... Yeah. Especially if you had, and like, her family was all white and she's black. If you're going to adopt a kid that obviously doesn't fit with the family. Two kids. Like, oh yeah, her brother was adopted too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, you know, like there's no point in trying to hide anything, I feel like. Okay. Then the last one on your stack was Number of the Stars. This is really short, World War II set in Denmark. Um, our main character, they're trying to smuggle out her Jewish friends, I believe. Mm. We listened to this on audio probably when you were like grade one or two. So it's been a long time since I've read it. What were your thoughts? I thought I was gonna like really like it and I would be, it would be one of those like cry books. Mm -hmm. And I didn't. Like, it wasn't bad. It just wasn't what I was expecting. Okay. That's fair. I disagree with you, <laughs> but that's fair. Okay, then do you have any thoughts that you want to share on any of the Mm, the audiobook. audiobooks well, or... Well, A Place to Hang the Moon is on my list. Yes, it was on your list. We decided yeah. to listen to it instead. Um, how many stars did you would you give this one? Probably like four and a half. I seriously think if you would have read it, you might have liked it better. Yeah, the narrator wasn't great. Yeah, she was not. That's a stinky cat fart. <laughs> Yuck. Okay. Okay, that's the only one I've talked about so far. That's okay. what I talked about while you were gone. So I will talk about the rest of these. Oh, we're currently listening to um, the insignificant life events. events in the life of a cactus. <laughs> a really long title. Anything you want to say about that so far? Oh, uh, well, it's just really great. It is really good. And it's hilarious. I think we're a little over halfway through it. I don't know. Cats are weird. What are you doing? Okay, hopefully I can finish this off with less interruptions. Insignificant events in the life of cactus is going really well. I'll update when we're officially done because things might change. But so far I would highly recommend the first like 60% or wherever we are at. It is laugh out loud funny. It's about a girl that was born without arms and she's adopted. Um, and her take on things, like she's so funny. You know, instead of wallowing in pity, her parents have pushed her to be independent I think she's 12, 13, um, and her sense of humor is is laugh out loud funny. All four of us, from the nine-year-old boy to my husband, have laughed out loud during the book. So hopefully it doesn't end terribly, but so far I highly recommend it. Now the rest of our books. We, Gregor the Overlander, I think I had this one on Reka's list as well. Yes, I did. Um, we were just picking whichever books we could find on audio. This one, we only got 30% through, and then three-fourths of us were really bored. So Ephraim is the only one that actually wanted to continue with it. So I told him he can listen to this or the rest of the series on audio, but the rest of us decided to stop, and then we started the insignificant events in the life of the cactus, and we've all been hooked. So unfortunately, that's too bad. This is by Suzanne Collins, who wrote The Hunger Games. I expected more. It's just mediocre. It wasn't terrible. It just wasn't very interesting. 
Okay, and then two that I have been reading aloud in our morning basket. The first one we started with was Little Cat's Luck. This is a free verse novel about a cat that uh, follows a leaf one day, gets out of the house, then she ends up she's looking for a special spot outside, um, but then it turns out she's lost and things go down. I really enjoyed it. Even Ephraim was constantly asking me to read another chapter. If you're not good at reading out loud, like me, uh, free first novels are really good because the lines help you know when to like take a breath and pause and slow down the reading. Part of the reason that I'm so bad at reading out loud, well it's kind of twofold. One, I talk and read really fast and two, I'm my eyes are usually reading a couple lines ahead of like, where I'm speaking and so then I can get all tongue-tied. Um, but I like free verse novels for that. And then currently we are doing Case Closed. This is book two, stolen from the studio. We are at book one like a year and a half ago or so. So this is a choose your own adventure. We are following three main characters who are trying to solve a mystery. Their mom is actually the detective or the one guy's mom, um, but they want to try to solve it as well. And you make choices like are you going to interrogate this person or go check out this dressing room because we are in a studio this time. Uh, and we have failed twice so far. We went to military boot camp and got stuck in a room, got locked in a room. Um, but we keep going back to like where right before we, where we failed and trying a different route. And so far we're still going on. So this book looks really thick, but you generally don't read all the pages. And it, I'm just going to take this off. It's really cool because it has a lot of actual puzzles to solve. So like this page has Morse code. We haven't even done that one yet. Um, there was one that we did that had like an alphabet cipher where different letters were different. Of course, when I'm looking for them, I can never find them. Um, different letters equal different letters. I'm not sure if I'm explaining that right. I don't know what that is. I haven't done this random page of some kind of number pyramid thing. There's other messages. So you can do this book for quite a while because even if you solve it the first time, if you went all the way through, you could try different routes and see different messages. I don't know. We enjoyed book one and Book Outlet recently had books three and four on there. So I went to go order it. Book three went out of stock before I could order it, but I did managed to snag book four, which will be coming soon. So I don't know if you guys like the choose your own adventure kind of thing. I would recommend this series. The one kid in here, his name is Frank. My kids think he's hilarious because he just pipes up with like random things all the time. I think he's super annoying and he should be disciplined by the parents, but it's okay. They're having fun reading about him and I'm just so thankful my kids aren't annoying like him. So there you go, that gives you a little bit of a very um, honest, I guess, take on what we're all reading with a lot of interruptions, true life. Um, I'm curious to know if you guys have any like book recommendations for either one of my kids or for us in our homeschool to either do on audio or as part of our morning basket, now that you kind of have an idea of what we've been enjoying and what we haven't. Um, thanks so much for being here with us.